Okay, so in this type of relationship, you know, the worst thing that you want to do in the premarital phase of your relationship is have sexual relations with the person. Not just because it's haram. I'm going to take you deeper than that. See, we tend to look at it, well, it's haram and I can make toba, and we try to, you know, we pathologize a lot as Muslims. We play around with the idea of toba. I'm just going to do this just this one time and inshallah we're going to get married and then we'll be able to bury that. Underneath, you know, years of toba, years of righteous deeds. We try to, so many bad deeds, so many skeletons, man, buried underneath what we believe is hasanat, what we believe is istighfarat. So many skeletons buried underneath our toba. Because we think that we're going to premarital court, he gets me in a situation or she gets me in a situation where, you know, we're going to go ahead and do it, but then we're going to get married and make toba, and then, you know, we'll, we'll be able to move past that. Let me share something with you. Sex. Sexual relations is a very intimate act. Very intimate act. So much so that penetration is not just physical penetration. It's spiritual and emotional penetration as well. The Prophet wasallam said that when you commit zina, commit, listen to this very closely. When you commit fornication with a person, your iman, kharaja min huwa iman Your iman, your faith leaves you. Your faith leaves you, leaves you. When you commit fornication, when you penetrate a man penetrating a woman, a woman allowing herself to be penetrated by a man that is haram for her, your iman leaves you. And it hovers over you like a cloud until you stop the act and make toba, and then your iman returns back to you. So that's one thing. When your iman leaves you, let's follow me very, very closely. When your iman leaves you, right? Your body now, this vessel, your soul, has now become a vessel for negative energy. Absolutely. One of the greatest forms of transference of energy is sexual intimacy. La yazni azani. Absolutely. Jazakallah khair. That the person does not commit zina, except at the time he committing zina, he or she is not a believer. Your iman hovers over you like a cloud. When your iman leaves you, that means that your body becomes a vessel willing to receive any energy that is out there. Because it's no longer a vessel for good energy. It's a, it's a vessel now for negative energy. And when we're penetrating one another, male and female, you are transferring your energy into that person. And woman, as a woman, very dangerous for you as a woman, you are now receiving negative energy from somebody. Sometimes the negative energy that you receive, you can't get rid of. Absolutely. Sometimes the negative energy that you receive from somebody else, you can't get rid of. And Allah forbid that person gives you a child. Allah forbid you do the ultimate. Not only is it fornication, but now you are carrying the child in your womb that is haram for you to carry. La ilaha illallah. You are carrying a child in your womb that is haram for him or her to be there. Nine months you are carrying this kid in your womb and he or she does not belong there. Has no divine privilege, no divine permission to be there. Follow me. Follow me. The child is innocent. Obviously, the child is innocent. The child is innocent. Child has no sin on the child. But also, the child is also going to, because of that act, is also going to, you know, going to be affected by the repercussions of that act. It's going to be affected by the repercussions of that act. The Prophet ﷺ warned us of the children of fornication and adultery. The children of fornication and adultery. Absolutely. The child is going to be affected by that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةٍ لَا تُسِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً And fear of fitna that will not only affect the innocent from amongst you. Now when fitna spreads, it affects everybody. So when a child is born of, of that particular behavior, no doubt the child is going to be affected by that as well. The child is innocent. But that doesn't mean that an innocent person is not going to be affected by the actions of their parents. Absolutely. Absolutely. So understand the transference of energy that is happening here. The worst thing that you could do is have premarital relations with somebody that is haram for you to be. You are welcoming this person into such an intimate space. And that person is bringing with them their negative energy. Because at the time that you and him are doing it, at the time that you and him are doing it, neither one of you has any iman. And the scholars say, right, very deep, follow me here. The scholars say that the relationship between your iman and you when you are engaging in this act, how do we understand the statement of the Prophet ﷺ that the person that at the time they are committing zina, they are not a believer. Does that mean at the time that you're committing zina that you are a kafir, a disbeliever? No. Because then that means that we will be playing into this narrative that major sins remove you from the fold of Islam. La, that's not what that means. What does it mean? What does it mean that when you are committing fornication or adultery, at the time that you're doing it, you are not a believer? What does that mean? And, and even further, the Prophet said, your iman hovers over you like a cloud until you stop the act and you commit, you make tawbah. What does it mean? The Prophet, the scholars, they use the metaphor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking your soul at the time that you go to sleep. Right? Allah says in the Quran that He is the one who takes the soul of the sleeping person when you go to sleep. So does that mean that your soul is not connected to your body when you sleep? It's not what that means. That means that the soul is in between two states. The soul, the foundation of the soul is still there in the body, but the soul is having another experience outside of the body. The soul can be two places at one time. The soul is having an outer body experience, but still being connected to the body. They said that the faith of the believer when he is committing fornication and adultery does the same exact thing. That the usul, the foundation of your faith is still there, but your faith is slowly leaving you as you engage in that act. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if your faith is slowly departing from your body, what if the person uh, doesn't ever ask for Toba? Then, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that when you commit a sin, the black stain is put on your heart. And if you make Toba and you stop committing the sin, then the black stain is erased. But if you continue to commit the sin and you don't make Toba, you don't stop, then the heart will eventually become completely black. And there's none further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a person with a black heart. None further than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a person with a black heart. Brothers and sisters, understand something, man. Stop leading with your heart. When the soul leaves the body, does it go to Allah? The soul leaves the body and goes into a state that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Does it go up to Allah? Allahu a'lam. And they ask you concerning the soul, O Muhammad, say that the soul is from the unfair, unseen affairs of my Lord. And I have only been given a little bit of knowledge. I can't speculate about what happens with the soul when it leaves its body. I don't, even the speculations of the scholars is just that speculation. We don't have any concrete evidence. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, has a book called Ruh, the soul. And he was probably one of the very few scholars who has spoke in depth about the matters of the soul. And even a lot of that information uh, is still arguable, uh, arguably, you know, not necessarily the, um, this is a discussion. This is not necessarily a lecture. I just use the hadith to segue into the actual discussion. So I want us, you know, I want brothers and sisters to be, you know, very careful about this premarital courting and, you know, dating and relationships and things like that and the type of energy that you are allowing into, the type, of the type of energy that you are allowing into your life, allowing into your body. When a man penetrates a woman, he's not just penetrating 
physically. It's not just a physical penetration into your body. Women, you have a hole in your body that a man is penetrating that hole. He's not just penetrating the hole physically. There's emotion that is attached to that and there's a spiritual connection that is attached to that. Make no mistake about that. Stop letting brothers talk you into, you know, let's just do it one time and then we can make toba. You understand what I'm saying? You know, and some people take this matter very lightly. And we didn't even talk about the, the you know, we're not even talking about um, the punishment for, you know, premarital relationships. We're not even talking about the punishment. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he was taken on a journey by Jibreel. Jibreel took him on a journey through the hellfire. And he saw some things in the hellfire. One of the images that he saw, and I think I'm going to do a khutbah about this next week. The Prophet Sallallahu said that Jibreel took him on a journey through the hellfire. And he saw a lot of scenes. I'm going to share one of them with you. He said one of the things that he saw was a furm, was a huge oven-like figure. Huge oven-like figure. He said, and when Jibreel opened this oven-like figure, he saw men and women in that furn, in that oven, and they were naked. And they were being scorched. And every time they climbed to the top and tried to get out, there was an angel pushing them back in. And the Prophet ﷺ said he turned to Jibreel and asked them, what was their sin? What did they do? Why are they being tortured like this? And he said, these are the men and women who engage in fornication and adultery in the dunya. Yeah. You guys follow me? Very important. Very important. The next time you're in the kitchen and you got your stove up, 350, 250, I want you to open your stove and feel the flames as they come out. Feeling the heat from the stove as it comes out. And I want you to remember, a shade the shade youth car, as the Arabs, they have a saying, a shade the shade youth car, that sometimes thinking about one thing can remind you of something else. Absolutely. I want you to think about that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So now, for those of the brothers and sisters who have been victims of this, you've been a victim of shaitan, a victim of your desires. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. If I fell into something like this in my life, and right now I'm feeling horrible, right now I might be living this everything that I'm talking about right now there might be somebody listening who is living this right now living in a haram relationship right now what is it that I can do to get myself right this information this and I, I mean like I'm not even talking about some of the other punishments for fornication and adultery this is serious business that Muslims take very lightly today. We show up at the masjid together, riding in the car together, living together, and we're not even married. SubhanAllah. Living together, and we're not married. Riding in the car on our way to Jumu'ah, functioning like we're a couple, and we're not even married. The, there is nobody on the face of this earth that is worth going to the hellfire for. There is nobody on the face of this earth that is worth going to the hellfire for. There is no private part that is worth going to the hellfire for. I mean, you have to ask yourself, is it really that good? You're willing to go to hell for it? Whether you are male or female. Is it really that good? That you're willing to go to hell for it? That you're willing to be tortured in the hellfire for it? Nobody's private part is that, is that good. It's worth that. But because sometimes we lead with our hearts, 
We tell ourselves, you know, I'll, I'll answer to Allah later. I'll deal with this later. I'll make it right later. And then making it right later never actually comes around. Because you're strung along from one relationship to the next, to the next. So, should they get married or should they end it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before I answer that question, let me give you this verse from the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, لَا تَسْأَلُوا عَنْ أَشْيَا إِنْ تُبَدَ لَكُمْ تَسُؤْكُمْ Don't ask about things that when they are made clear to you, it's going to cause you a problem. If you are not ready to hear the answer and not ready to act upon the information, don't ask. Just keep living because for you, ignorance is bliss. I'm just saying in general. For a person who is not really ready to hear the facts, ignorance is bliss. For those of you who are ready to hear the facts and to change your narrative right now, I'm going to give it to you straight. Any relationship, any relationship, I'm saying this emphatically, any relationship that starts off haram will never end up the type that you ride off into the sunset happily ever after. There are very few situations that are allowed to weather the storm. But in my experience, I haven't seen one. Unless the couple was just completely ignorant. Unless the couple was both, you know, not really attached to Islam. You know, not really, you know, connected to Islam like that. And they were, you know, trying to do the right thing. And then they came to Islam and then they, you know, got married and tried to, you know. I'm talking about a person who's a practicing Muslim. Pray five times a day. But you engage in a haram relationship with somebody right now. That situation is not going to end, end up you riding off into the sunset happily ever after living the married life. It's not going to happen. Let me give you another hadith. The Prophet وسلم, said, Ayyu amrin lam yabda bi bismillah fa huwa matruk. Out come a call in the view sallallahu wasallam. He said, Any situation or any event, any endeavor that does not begin with the name of Allah, then it is void, maktur. Anil barakah. It is separated for any from any barakah. There's no blessing in it. So if you begin eating your food and you did not say Bismillah over your food, your food is void of barakah. Your food is void of barakah. Your food is void of barakah. There's no blessing in your food. Any affair that you do not begin Bismillah with, there's no barakah in it. You cannot begin a haram relationship on Bismillah. There is no barakah in it. I would suggest cut your losses to go cold turkey and say, hey, you know what? We were doing this thing wrong. We were doing this thing wrong. And when we know better, we do better. I'm cutting you right now, cutting this situation off in hopes that I can salvage some forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, وَمَن لَمْ مَن تَرَكَ شَيْءٍ لِلَّهِ أَوْ وَضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرٌ مِنْ That whoever leaves something for the pleasure of Allah, Allah will replace it with what is better. Perhaps if you leave this relationship for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it. Replenish your iman, will replenish your faith. May not give you somebody better than him or better than her. Stop looking for the replacement. Stop looking for the replacement to be tangible. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you your faith back, that's enough. Consider yourself favored, highly blessed. If you leave a haram relationship for the pleasure of Allah, don't look for Allah to replace him or her with somebody better. Look for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to replace them with something that is better. And there's nothing better than faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing, than having, nothing better than having your faith back. Stop looking for a better person. 
We're looking for tangible replacement. And whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with what is better. Doesn't mean that if you leave a haram relationship, Allah is going to replace you, replace this man or this woman with somebody that's better. It doesn't always have to be a tangible replacement. It could be intangible. Something intangible like faith. Giving your, your iman back. And there's, there's something, there's nothing comparable to that. To be able to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. To be, be, be able to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. To be able to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. These are, you know, you know entities that, 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 you know, you can't put a price tag on. Are immeasurable. Immeasurable. So stop looking for the tangible replacement. But leave the situation for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave someone you love, because you might love the person, for someone that you love even more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that those الَّذِينَ يَتَّخِذُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْ دَادَيْ يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كُحُبِّ اللَّهِ he said those who disbelieve They take as deities and gods Idols Right? Other than Allah Loving them like they should love Allah But those who truly believe Love Allah more Be the one who loves Allah more As Ibn Qayyim said about Ibn Taymiyyah He said Shaykhuna ahabu ilayna Wallahu ahabu ilayna minhu Lakin al-haq ahabu ilayna minhu he said that my Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is beloved to us, but we love the truth more than we love him. We love the truth more than we love him. Like in al-Haq, ahabu ilayna. We love the truth more than we love him. We love Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, that's my Shaykh. He said, but the truth is more beloved to us than he is. You love this guy, this woman that you're in a relationship with, but you should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ But those who truly believe love Allah more. Love Allah more. As the scholars mentioned in a, a, a line of poetry, that تَعْسِ اللَّهَ وَتَزْعُمُ حُبَّهُ هَذَا وَاللَّهِ فِي الْمِزَانِ لَشَّنِيعُ فَلَوْ كُنْتَ صَادِقًا لَوْ كَانَ دَعْوَتُكَ صَادِقًا لَأَطَعْتَهُ لِإِنَّ الْمُحِبْ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّهُ مُطِيعُ That you disobey Allah but you claim to love Him. This is, you know, this is a weird assessment of your love. He said because if your claim to love God was true, then you would obey Him. Because when you love someone, you obey them. لِإِنَّ الْمُحِبْ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّهُ مُطِيعُ Because when you love someone, you obey them. So you can't claim to love God and then turn around and, you know, turn around and claim, Hayakallah, ya Abba Sumayya. Allah, ibarak feek. Hayakallah. Right? You can't claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then turn around and disobey Him. So if and you are in a haram relationship right now and you want to prove to Allah that you love Him, cut that person off. Cut them off. And that will show whether or not you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't look back. Tell the person, listen, I was wrong in this relationship that we have been doing. And I need to prove to Allah that I love him more than I love you. I love you, but I love Allah more. So what I'm doing is I'm calling this relationship quits right now. Cold turkey right now. Cold turkey right now. If you can't do that right now, then, you know, you got to deal with the consequences, man. You got to deal with the consequences. The greatest way to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you love him more than you love anything else is to leave that thing. The Prophet sallallahu said there's three characteristics. Whoever possesses them, they will taste the halawa, the sweetness of faith. Sweetness of faith. And one of them, and yukun Allah wa rasulahu ahabbu ilayhi. Is that Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to you, more dear to you than anything else. Anything or anyone else. If you didn't know that before, you know it now. If you didn't know it before, you know it now. You want to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're really sorry for what you're doing? 
then abandon that relationship right now. I challenge you because what will not challenge you will not change you. What will not challenge you will not change you. I challenge you, anybody right now in a haram relationship, whether you are married already or whether you are not married already, you engaging in a haram relationship, I challenge you right now to challenge yourself to cut that person off right now. And if you can't do it, then consider yourself amongst those who are weak. And I pray that at some point Allah gives you the strength to be obedient to him. I pray at some point in your life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to choose him over everybody else. Because you haven't chosen Allah. You haven't chosen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you will allow your relationship with somebody to let you go to hell, then that means that you value that person, that relationship with that person over God. Which means that you haven't tasted the sweetness of Iman. You don't even know what it tastes like. You don't even know what faith tastes like. He said that three qualities, whoever possesses all three, iman, they will taste a dhok, you will taste the sweetness of Iman. Absolutely, Allah will not change the condition of a people until at first you change within yourself. Change starts with you first. And that is that Allah and His Messenger become more beloved to you, more dear to you than anyone or anything else. So if you got somebody who has your heart hostage without a marriage contract, I feel sorry for you. How can somebody have your heart hostage without a marriage contract? There's no paperwork. You need to ransom your heart. Ransom your heart. Be willing to give something up to sacrifice something to get your heart back. Somebody got your heart hostage. And there's consequences to that. Somebody kidnapped your heart, it doesn't belong to them, and whatever you need to do, you need to do a ransom to get your heart back from that person. And as Allah says in the Quran, لَن تَنَالُوا لِبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّوا That you will never achieve righteousness until you give or spend from that which you love. You got to give up something you love for someone that you love even more, for something that you love even more. You got to give up what you love for someone or something that you love even more. You're never going to get it. You're never going to achieve righteousness until you give what you love. Give from what you love for someone or something that you love even more. I'm just giving it to you as it is. If you can't bring yourself to do that right now and you're listening to Periscope right now, I pray for you. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the strength. You're a weak believer and I pray that Allah gives you the strength to become a strong believer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-mu'min al-qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allahi min al-mu'min al-da'if wa fi kullin khayrun. That the strong believer is more beloved, more dear and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. But in both of them is good. Suffice it to, be, to suffice it to say, you're just a weak believer, and we pray that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make you a strong believer at some point.